Hi. Last but not least, I would like to talk about what are commonly called the Semitic religions. Uh, they're called the Semitic religions because they're seen as having a root in Judaism. And out of Judaism sprang Christianity as one branch and Islam as another branch. Whether it's the proper name is a matter which is up for discussion because it can be postulated that actually the Jews took their religion from the worship of Atun in Egypt and that the worship of Atun in Egypt is actually another form of Zoroastrianism which came from Persia and also another offspring of Zoroastrianism and of this whole tradition and another possible root for these Semitic religions is actually Sufism. But what this group of religions have in common is basically they state that there is a supreme power, a singular supreme being and that this supreme being is in a way the controlling power, the controlling essence of our universe. So contrary you could say to the Vedic religions which in a way have a more clockwork like universe, it is a machine which once started will simply run its course and you can fit in and be moved by the wheels or be ground to dust by the wheels. But in the Semitic religions it is very possible to have a relationship with the ultimate and to benefit from the relationship with the ultimate creator or according to the Gnostics caretaker of our universe. So it's an, a very, another basic tenet entirely again if we compare it to like nature religion, polytheism and Vedic religion. It basically states that through some event there has been a separation uh, between us and this ultimate source, the heavens, um, the highest person. So there's heavens, there's paradise, there's this world and there's hell. So it basically states that there are different stations within, our, within creation and that depending on the will of the caretaker we are placed in, at one of these stations. We can be placed in the heavens, we can be placed in paradise, we can be placed on earth, we can be placed in hell and sometimes there is also an in-between place between which is called purgatory. Ultimately we are given a set of rules which are meant to uh, get us into the good graces with this supreme being, with the supreme personality. And we are given a set of methods how to work with this supreme being or supreme personality. So there are several exercises, several virtues we can develop so that he will like us more. And there are certain sins which if we do them too much he will like us less. Um, so rather than a cogwork universe, it is much more about judgment. It's not so much a blind system, if I do this, that is the result. But more, if I do bad things, I will be punished. If I will do good things, I will be rewarded. Um, it is easy to see why uh, such a system is very desirable for leaders. And uh, because it gives them very much a tool to guide behavior of people within their society. And we find also that these Semitic religions, more than any other religion, have been integrated into government. And they actually become a part of, and a branch of government even. And the government will often use these systems to yeah, direct their people in a certain direction by, for instance, declaring a holy war or a holy law so that by doing something you're not just going against the leader, the king, the sultan or the caliph but you're actually going against the supreme being and your punishment will not just be a fine, um, a beating or be thrown in jail or killed but actually it will be an even more severe punishment 
in the afterlife going to purgatory or going to hell. So it is very much a system of compliance. It's what you could say a slave religion, it has also often been called. But there's also an upside to it. Because it is not about who you are in this world. It is not about how wealthy you are, how powerful you are. This is not what the Supreme Being judges you by. It is actually usually contrary. Because once you are trapped by the system, by the world, the world will dictate your actions, will control you. While if you, in a way, have less of the world and more of God, of the Divine, you have more freedom to act in the correct way. It is easier to act in the correct way and your rewards, you can choose them to be either worldly rewards or spiritual rewards. So if you find that this is a very fundamental choice you have to make in your everyday life, how much will I do or invest into my worldly life, in my worldly activities, or how much will I invest in my spiritual activities? How important are the people around me for me as compared to how important is the divine to me? These are very important religions which can help you to focus on the spiritual, to focus on morality, on doing the right thing, on doing the good thing, rather than doing what is easy, what is convenient. Um, so it's often convenient to steal, to lie, to cheat, um, to be selfish. And these religions really provide an antidote towards the negative parts of human nature. So if you find that you're really struggling with your own dark side, then these are very useful religions to take because it is all about struggling with yourself, about struggling with your dark side, overcoming your dark side, overcoming your chains, overcoming the chains which are put upon you by the world. So if it is about liberation, liberating yourself from yourself, liberating yourself from the pressures of the world, then I think these Semitic religions will be very useful to you. As always, there's the division between, you could say, the Sunni and the Protestant side, where it is much more focused on individual achievement, individual progress. And the Orthodox, the Catholic and the Shia side, where you have saints, where you have angels uh, and other intermediate powers, which can help you and support you in your struggle to maintain your religion, maintain your path. I hope that at least one of these paths appeals to you and if you would like to go deeper into any of these paths or topics please make a donation or even better become a member at our website for more in-depth discussions on how to improve yourself within any of these religions. Thank you for listening and I hope we, you will also listen to our other series which we will make about education and work and about relationships.